Hello everybody, welcome back, welcome back to another video. If you're from YouTube, Discord, or Twitch, welcome, welcome. Uh, today guys, I'm gonna run you through how to start the Boeing 737-800 as the most simplest way as possible. Uh, but yeah, let's just begin. If you have any questions, let me know in, in the comments below or in the Discord. And with that, and with that let's begin the recording. This is cold and dark. Not much you can do here. First things you do is that if you're running Zebo, this is Zebo, by the way. You should have a a tablet. This is called the EFB. This is where you control, let's say, like it's like a flight leg, ground crew, avatab. This is a separate add-on. And then feet weight balance. And those are all the settings. I'll go over the settings another time. As of right now, it's not important as it relates to this video. So what you want to do first is go to ground services, right? Set GPU, chocks. And ASU connects doors. If you have a ground service plugin, open these. But I will not open these for now. And that's it. So let's go back to home, right? Let's make sure we go back to the overhead, right? Here. So you have many different things here. So let's so let's begin here. So this is like the battery compartment here. What you want to do is turn on the battery first, all right? You see all these lights come on, right? Then next thing you want to do is click ground power. Good. Next, what you want to do is flick this emergency exit lights. Turn up your lights first, so that way you can see everything. And then let me hide the yoke here. There you go. See? Let me check that out. There you go. Make sure you turn up all these lights, so that way you can see everything in the cockpit. All right. Good. So let's go back here, and then go down here to this is called the pedestal. So this is where you have like your radios, transponders, and ILS and ADF frequencies and VORs as well. All that, all that good stuff. So let's go back here, right? What else do we need to do? So once you see this, right, we can do a few things first, right? Um, you can turn on these for now. Uh, check your checklist as well. This may depend, but I'm doing this off off of memory, right? Then let's see. This is error. Then what you want to do is turn this light to steady. And then from here, you can turn the packs to auto and flick these off for now. These are unimportant. Then when you go here, right, IRS display, make sure you hit the left and the right to nav. They're on DC. Then with this little knob here, right, this, this, this little knob here, make sure you select heading STS. And this number will tell you how many minutes It'll take you until alignment is complete. And you should see two alignments here. And a little fun fact, IRS can only work on ground as well. So it's better to make sure your plane is stationary and you're not moving or else the IRS reading will be off. So, yes. so right here, you can dial this around. Good. There you go. Now, before we go to the FMC, let's make sure our pedestals here. If you have radios, if you're on Vatsim, for example, put Unicom or ATIS or Ground or Delivery, whichever is first. Then, then let's go here one more time. And let's see. Make sure you turn these on as well. And APU can come on later, uh, but while, as we start. So let's go back to here, right? Let's go to, to FMC. Here, this is called the FMS. This is where you basically will see what what you put into the computer as well. So let's go to FMC, right? FMC. Go to, so you should, this is the item page. This tells you the model, nav data you're running on. I use Navigraph, so that way this is the latest air rack as of August 27th. This is my active air rack cycle. And then all this information, you can also click next page. It just tells you other t technical information. Just gonna pause in it. Today I'm sitting here in Chicago here, so I would enter the the, uh, the iCal code. So do be this, right? Now what I do is I click next page, GPS left, and I paste that into set iris position. Once you're done with that, click route. Put the the origin here, and let's say I wanna I wanna go to let's go to Newark. Let's go to Newark, right? So we're so I'm gonna put the iCal code for Newark, right? Here. If you have a flag code, 
and you should have one. So I'm gonna. So right now, as, as you saw in the beginning, I'm southwest. So I'm gonna put south west 4:30, right? So put that here. Now co route. If you have a company route, uh, put that in. Otherwise, it's not important. Runway that is automatically entered when you select a sit. So here I'm going to be right back and I'm gonna make a five plan. Here we are, welcome back. I'm here. Let's this is my OFP, so this is my flight plan I'm making, right? So if you're using Simbrief, which I use, it's really good actually, you would go to the second page, right? So this is your route, okay? I will if you guys want a different video, I'll make that. But for now I will basically just know what I use for Simbrief. So here, this is your, your route, right? So you go to depth arrival, you go to departure. We're taking off runway nine center, so I put nine center first. And there are no SIDs, so that's interesting. And so let's go to route. Activate. Good. Now let me double check one more time. It seems as if there are no SIDs, which is odd. So oh that, that's right, because direct. Sorry about that. So so here, right, we go to route, right? Now, because we don't have a SID and we have all these waypoints, we're going to go to the next page. Now, the first waypoint is Duffy. So, if I mispronounce any of these SIDs, that's my that's my, my bad. I uh, Sometimes, some, some of these names are hard to pronounce. Next is to Echo Lima X-Ray. So, that's a VOR. So, Echo Lima X-Ray. Then, direct to Hawk. So, Hawk. Then we go to, to Doxy. Then we go to Sosik. Sosik. Next page. Direct to Kiho. So Kiho. Then we took, we got on an airway. So this is J584. So when you have an airway, so this side is the airway and this side is, the, is just waypoint. So I'm going to put in J584, right? So go to here. Now, you need to select an uh, exit from this airway. So after this airway, there is this is the end. So this will be Sierra Lima Tango. So this will be Sierra Lima Tango, right? So that's that. Then we have an arrival here. So this is the, I don't recall, but we're going to find it out. So once you're done, don't forget to click execute. That way your flight plan will be loaded in. Then we go to Newark Arrival. We take the FQM3 Arrival. We, I just saw it, there we go. Right, SLT Transition, this is the same waypoint, right? So this should match with that. Now, it says that we're taking the ILS4 right. So I wanna take ILS4 right. Now, sometimes transitions, with well, these are a little tricky, so I would double check with your charts if you have Navigraph. But for now, I'm not gonna put a transition, so I'm gonna click Execute. Now, once you have here you go to legs and this is this is all of your waypoints now what if you have a discount or something happens right so in this case we don't have a discount but here we do right so what would happen is that here let's say I don't want I don't want a vector right so here you click on gritty right you click on the vector that deletes it right and you click execute so if you go back to the ND right so let's go back to plan Go back to the first page, right? Here, we're sitting here at the beginning, right? This is Duffy, this is like the beginning. So here, click step, right here. This is step, so click. Make sure your, your plan's correct. If you wanna zoom out, just this this knob here will help you do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll 40 miles out, so see? There should be no discounts or like, uh, any like legs just like, just hanging out there. They, they should all be connected. And see, there you go, that's new work. So let's go. So let's go back to five, back to map. Now, once we have done that, we want to go to routes, performance in it, and then here is a different part. So let me help you with that. We're back here in the EFB, right? So we're gonna use this tab in a minute. I'll I'll help you with that. So let's go to a few weight and balance, payload. Now payload is just basically like how much everything will be will be considered into the low, the airplanes like passengers, cargo, all that stuff. So, so go back here, right? I'm gonna zoom out. Next page. This is the page. We're on page two, so we're on page three. This is more like the weights. 
So here, right? Let's say I have a payload today. So pay my payload today will be 30.4. So you go down here to payload total. 30.4. Then you click this little back button. Fuel. 17.0 on the dot. So right here, 17.0. Good. Fuel. Call a fuel truck. If it takes long, then that's because you have probably a realistic setting on for how long it takes to refuel. I'll go over settings another time, but for now mine is short, so mine's just pretty instant. So now that we have done that, right? We'll go back to the so we're gonna go back to the FMC, right? Performance in it. In my case, I can just click and it'll populate. So there you go. My reserves. So back to page one, right? So let's say I need to divert to this is Washington Dulles. So let's say I need to divert and I need this amount of fuel. How would I put it? Well, it would be 4.7 around. 4.8, 4.7. It's very similar. So I'm gonna do 4.8, right? So I'm gonna do reserves. There you go. Cost index. You can find that right here. And this is all important too. Well, most this is mostly is, but everything else this tells you like other information. So this is your cruise sys. This is your cost index. So we have five. Flight level for cruise today, just right here. Flight level steps, right here. So we're basically 37,000 feet today. So 370, good. Execute that. Now cruise wind, that you find that on your average wind. So it would be 281 slash 63. Hit that there. Execute, good. Now, everything else here, you don't have to mess around, but if you're familiar in advance, you know this, you go ahead and do that. I, don't, I usually don't put this in, the airplane just works, it's fine, but that's just me. So, ne let's go to the next page. So, this is difficult because there are calculators out there, but some of them are tricky to find. So, this is basically how much you set your thrust on the engines for takeoff, right? So, let's say I want to do a toga, right? So, this is where you, you would do the D rate. D rate just means you just reduce the power on your engine for takeoff. And if you have long runways, you can use less power on the engine and it will save the life of it. But if you're on a short runway, let's say, I don't know, maybe in John Wayne, right? It's like 4,000, 5,000 feet, right? You have to toga it because you're, you're running out of space if you don't. So here, right, you have a 26K, 24K, and 22K. Those are just like the speeds of the engines or like how much power you want to produce. So if, let's say I want to do a toga out of Chicago here just, just for fun, right? So you go to take off and then climb and that's it and in here it'll tell you that's how much the rate of it is but what if I want to derate it let's say 45 right for example so here you see it reduced to 95.5 and then also the computer wants me to do climb too so the second preset so you can do it whatever you like but for now I'm gonna put zero zero okay maybe not you click delete so there you go see so I'm gonna toggle so I'm gonna leave toggle for now take off I want to do flaps 5, right? So flaps 5. Usually you want to do flaps 5, 10, or 15. The the Detroit Rummy, you, you want to do 10 or 15. 15 is, I think, is rare, but 10 is possible. And these, and then here, QR ratios in your VR and 2, right? So here, right? All you do is click on these. So these are your V speeds, right? So V1 is like, well, the, t the point where you can you have to take off and V rotate is when you can rotate and V2 is when the wheel should be off the runway I believe so but there's that and then click here right this is your center gravity and this is important because not only it tells you your center gravity but it, it also tells you your trim so right so let's go down here right now it's slow so we don't do that we do that after when we push back and everything so so there's that so the next page just tells you a little information. If you want to cut that, if I put that, that's fine. So there you go. That's pretty much it. You can check cruise here, cruise right, and then climb as well, and then descent. And this tells you oh, this is good information too because it tells you at what time you will have descent. And all the time is in Zulu, so make sure you know how to read military time or the 24-hour standard. And this is all Zulu, so it's not relative to your time zone. It's like just like international. And then this tells you your distance as well. So let's go back to legs, right? Now that we're done with that, I'm gonna close this. So the next thing the next thing you wanna do is turn on the APU. Hold it for about two seconds. Let go. You should see a low oil pressure warning. That's a good sign. Then to prepare for the APU, you wanna click APU here. 
And then, if you're in a cold condition, let's say outside is really cold, make sure you turn on window heats. And then probe heats, you can you can turn it on as well. So, the next thing you want to do is also make sure you set your pressurization panel. So here, we're going 37,000 feet, so I'm going to do that. Lane altitude, I'm going to reset to zero until I know what it is. Make sure it's auto, don't touch this, okay? The airplane will do the job, so, yeah. What else? And let me just switch this back to PPOS. There we go. And turn your taper on. AP generator. Now, you don't have to follow what I do for this one. This is a different topic. This is more like how where the power comes from. Otherwise, it's difficult to understand what is, what is which. I still don't understand what it is to, to this day, but I still do it because, well, these tells you these numbers here. So, so there you go. See? There you go. So, where were we? So, when the APU is ready, right? This is the reading. You want to turn on the APU generators. This will transfer the bus from the APU to the APU from the, the ground power. So now you're not you're no longer on ground power. So let's go back here, right? Now the next thing you want to do is make sure you're autopilot, right? So what you want to do first is let me turn this on light real quick, sorry. Okay. So what you want to do here is first of all set your your initial altitude. Sometimes ADC will give you an altitude, but but for now, we're going to go up to 30, 37,000 feet. Since we have no SID and we're not online today, we just do 37,000 feet. Unless there is, consult with your charts. Or if ADT gives you one, please follow that. Okay, don't like break the rules there. Then, here, if I recall correctly, you can do V2 here. You want to do V2 here. So, turn on both flight directors. Arm the auto throttle. And V2, if you don't know, if you forgot like me, you go to, you go to route takeoff and here this is your v2 speed so it'll be one four six so let's go here one one four six there you go good now to make things easy for you you should click LNAV first if it doesn't then what you want to do is find the runway heading first so let me go to my so let's go let's go let's go to charts right so let's go back to here I have to have airport Chicago here right that one next click here then airport airport info so we're taking it out of runway 9 center so our heading would be 093 so let's go back here it'll be zero oh look at that see I already put that in for me of course don't worry too much about it that way you do heading select and vnav if lnav may not be on at this time but a if, if this does occur, don't worry. When you take off, you can click LNAV and it will engage automatically. So, there's that. Now, what else? Here, right? Let's say you're given a squat code, right? And let's say you're on Unicom, right? You just put 2000 and then make sure you set it to, to TARA. This is also known as Mode C, or Mode Charlie. That way, the, the controller can see where you are in the air, on the ground, or but wherever. So, once you're done with that, I'm going to zoom this out. You can turn these on if you like. I'll turn these off. Then, it's time for pushback. Now, how do you prepare for pushback? So, what you want to do first is turn off your packs. Alright. And I believe you can do auto or open. I think it doesn't matter. Now, open the engine, please, right? Then, turn on these pumps these are your fuel pumps and they should correspond to which tank has fuel if the center doesn't have tank don't turn it on or else you see a low pressure warning so that's, that's also another hint that tells you now what else see we are ready to go so let's let's call for push now before you call for push before before you call for push make sure you go to ground services Disconnect all these things before you start. Now, if you have the better pushback plugin installed, go here, click request pushback. Hey, Captain, let me know where you want this thing. Now, let's go here, right? Let's go to here. And let's say I want to do a short back, uh, pushback, so we click enter. Great news, Captain, your toe's coming. And then, it seems we have this is normal, guys, don't worry about it. Then, when we're ready, all you do is wait.
Okay. Now, time for pushback. So let's go here. Here comes the pushback. Line them up. Now, what you want to do first is wait a moment, right? So the pushback. So, uh, forgot one thing also. If you want, click make sure to turn on trim air. According to my checklist, it did say trim air, so I turned it on. Now, another thing you need to know is that's fine. So, another thing is so how do you start the engines, right? So that's kind of one of the things that everyone wonders about. So what you want to do here is when you so on number two, right? Flick it to ground, and then come here, right? You should see a rotation. When you hit about 25 N2, so this is N2, right? 25. You want to raise this lever up. So let's wait. So on 17, 18, 19, 20. 25, right? Let's give it some fuel. Idle it. And then this should start r rushing. So there you go. See? So now we have a live. The engine is now alive. see from down here and it is alive now wait for this engine to be complete it's start up so this engine seems to be working is alive just about so done here go ahead and set your parking brake oh, good job so here parking brake and we're disconnecting the tow give me just a moment then you want to do the same process one more time so number one click it to ground Same thing. Wait until N2 is at 25. And while you're at this, don't forget to set your your barometers. So you can use Simbri for this, or you can use Active Sky. I use Active Sky, so I get my uh, what you call I get my information from here. So let's so let me so let's populate it here, right? Where is window capture? So so this is where I get my information, right? So, let's say I want to find conditions for Chicago here, right? And we're disconnected. So here, right? Signal and pin on the left. So Take it easy and have a safe flight. Here, it's telling me the pressure is 2985 or 1011 QNH, right? So, I'm going to set here to QNH. So, let me put that up there, right? So, it'll be 2985. There you go. It should be kind of in line with the ground here. That's how you know those are as well. And I almost forgot. So here, and one. Here, also set your anti-skid to RTLs for projected takeoff. That should clear out. Good. There you go. And let's find our engines. So there you go. It's alive as well. Now, once we're here, right? Once the engines are alive and well. Right, we go back to here, we turn on generators one, two, turn off the APU. Make sure you set your engine starts to con so continuous. Alright. Now for lights, turn off runway turn offs and taxi lights. Good. Now packs, this is really important. So right now the PSI is kinda low, so you wanna click auto, right, and turn off the APU bleed. So now this should this should be the set. So you can reset as well. There you go. Now, um, this is the Gen 1 here, and I think the battery there. So, now that we're done, and everything else is working, make sure these lights are on, that's fine. There you go, that's, that's basically it. That's uh, from the procedure from cold and dark to pushback and engine start. So there you go. Flaps, right, and trim. So remember, our trim was 5.25, so we go back here. You can estimate to your best of your ability. It doesn't have to be that perfect, but right. So it's a little slow here because I'm using mouse and I don't have my gear with me right now. But it should be right here estimately. Now flaps. Remember we said flaps. Let's see. Go back to M1 round. Take flat five, right? So that means you do flat five. So you can bring the the, the handle down to flat five. There you go. So and then you see, they should also tell you your flaps as well. There you go. Make sure that the, this this hand is going to five. So there you go. Don't forget that flash. That's part of your takeoff as well. All right, because the airplane will 
yell at you if you do not do that. So there you go. And uh, yeah, that's about it. To do a different way, right? So you go to D Link, AOC, request, weather request. Now, this is where you erase your request to weather via the A car system. So let's put Chicago here, right? Click send. Now wait until this is. This is now click message and now this tells you your your mentor so let's read together right so this is Chicago here 360 11 knots 10 century miles broken at 1600 overcast at 2500 temperature 22 degrees Celsius 2.17 altimeter 285 see same thing same thing right 285 right and then all the information that tells you about specific stuff so this way this is also another way to get your a card so this is Exclusive to Zebo and other aircraft also support the A car system, but this is why Zebo is really good, so you can see that as well. I will make a part two for takeoff procedures and stuff like that another day, but but for now that is all I can do for today. So if you guys appreciate it, uh, you know, leave in the comments or if you give a thumbs up, I don't know, whatever, you, how, how, however you want to appreciate it. I thank you so much for watching the video. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know in discord or in the comments whatever and i'll try my best to answer them with that thank you all and have a great morning afternoon evening all right see you.